Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration and it's a Sunday so it's time for one of the regularly up regularly scheduled updates where I go through and I talk a bit about what happened on the previous stream and how things have been going. So this is my uh, long range tra personal transport ship which has still got a decent amount of heat in it, good. Um, and this has been flying out and doing some um, pick collecting of um, Arcospheres so this time <clears throat> I went out to uh, Melancholia, Creepy Hollow and Interstellar Grotto because they're all nice and close together. And I launched another five Arcosphere collectors from each one. And because of where they are, that meant, um, because, sorry, because they're new places that I've not been to before, I was able to get, for each, for each five collectors I launched, I got five Arcospheres back, which is pretty good. So I've got 15 from those. And this fits into what I've been saying before, where... When you go out to a new uh, deep space um, asteroid field and launch some Arcosphere, the first five will come back and they, they seem to be more or less guaranteed to produce an Arcosphere. The sixth one in this case didn't and the seventh one did, so at that point it starts to get a little bit iffy. But the first five have so far, every single time, have produced an, one Arcosphere each. I also managed to get another 13, I think in total, from the 15 launches from deep into Stellar Void ones. So those are starting to get now to the point where they don't always produce an additional Arcosphere. But this does mean now that on the, um, the donut, the ship I was just looking at, I have another 28 Arcospheres ready. So 15 from the uh, from the the um, asteroid fields themselves, and another 13 from deep space. So I've got another 15 of those, sorry, 28 of those in total available to put into the system, and that's another roughly 50% on top of what I what I had before. So if I look back here in Norvis orbit, I can then come down and shove those in down down here. Into the, into the system here that turns Arcospheres into colourful Arcospheres and then starts doing useful things with them. Now, this has all ground to a halt, so I was I was afraid this might happen. So we've got to the point where this has finally... Um, ooh, interestingly. No, this... This has jammed up, despite this not being, being supposed to not happen. Okay. So this has, this has failed miserably. So somehow this... Um, <clears throat> yeah. This is supposed to be read oh it's because it's pulsing not holding oh you idiot lawrence right okay so those are supposed to be on hold not pulse and that means they will now hopefully disable all of these inserters that they're supposed to be they're supposed to be turning these ones off yes these ones off to put them into in, into here so this is now yeah right let me try that again it's like in in, in actual coherent words <clears throat> So, the way this system here is supposed to work is that when... I was aware that at some point we're going to get a bit of an imbalance on here and we're going to end up with the wrong types, the wrong numbers of... Um, or the wrong balance of um, types of data cards. So, when that happens, this is then going to fill up, fill up, fill up all the way back up here. And the idea was that when it got to these points, it would... We'd check to see if there were any of those particular types of cards here and if there were, then we'd stop the machine from making any more of those. So in this case, we've got the the ones with this sort of six-pointed star on, and the ones with the white dot in what's probably a black circle. I can't really tell. So that means this one and this one should, should both have stopped running. Um, now, if we look at it, if we look at here, we can see they didn't stop running because these are filled all the way back up until it's caused all of the arcospheres to be collected on this on the belt here. So this is the good news is that's why it's failed. It's not because my stirring has failed. The bad news is that it has still failed. So here we now, but because I was telling this to pulse, and pulse means that each time a thing goes through it, it will send out a brief signal of that particular item. Hold means that as long as anything is underneath it, it will constantly send out that signal. So what I wanted to do was hold, and so have these these inserters not insert any more arcospheres into the machines when the uh, when there's enough of their of their their particular type. And so if we look down here, you can see there's a, um, a red light on this one. Uh, you, I can't point to it because if I do, the highlight appears of it. But there is a red light on the one on the right and a green light on the one on the left. And that means that this machine is no longer going to be fed any arcospheres. But this one still will be because this one is producing the swirly ones, of which we have absolutely none. So, yeah, if I, if I nip over here now, in fact, give me a second. If I fly over to the um, Deep Space Science Production Facility over here, I can then drop in and I can fix this by just coming along here and picking up a handful of these um, cards like that. There we go. That's pulled them all through. And I can just put those in here like that to get rid of them. So I've got, I've got yes, there's an excess of them, but who cares? Right. So now we've still got this outputting the um, the signal off for the for the, the 
the starish shaped one. So this is this this is still turned off. So we've got the two archivists in here. We could make another one, but we but this machine is turned off and not going to. So that's that's okay. <clears throat> that means now we put those archivists that were trapped on this belt back into circulation. They're going to be stirred by all the machines here. They're going to be passed over, and and now all the as you can see. Most, meant some, some of the science machines at least have started working again. Down here we're still short of lambdas and size, um, which is fair because there aren't any up here. So we just, so we, we won't be making any more of this particular science pack until some more of those are available. Now, this is why I've been trying to get some more Arcospheres because, because in the last stream I also put in this machine up here. And this one is making Naquim Tesseracts. Those are quite expensive. They take a Naquim Cube, which is already expensive enough all by itself, another 16 plates, some Cryonite, which I don't care about, and three more Arcospheres, which they take, so it takes in Lambda, Psi, Zeta, outputs, in this particular case, Phi, Gamma, Omega, but sometimes it'll flip an output, Theta, Epsilon, and I'm not quite sure which other one. <clears throat> so this is basically the same sort of idea as these machines down here, but it's making something different. So the Naquim Cubes can then, in theory, be made, and they'll be passed off down here to be taken away. And the reason I've been making the Nakuim cubes, well, they've been going, being fed off to a station over here, and this is gradually filling up. Nakuim cubes are huge; they don't stack, so they just you, you fit seven of these in here. So eventually, when there's 40 in there, we can a train can come over, grab them, and bring them all up here and drop them off into the into these chests up here, where they'll go down this belt all the way around here. <laughs> As you can see, there's a few of them left, and they'll then be fed into this machine which is making the Deep Space Science 3 um, science packs. Um, or at least will when there's any Naquim cubes available. Oh, that's just a ghost at the moment, yeah. So there's a few of them in, in here that can't be used, which is a bit of a shame because it's a bit of a waste of Naquim cubes, which are, Naquim Tesseracts, which are rather expensive. But this system has basically worked for a while. So, and it's, as, as usual, all of the output stuff is being dumped onto this belt, uh, this belt. We're filtering out broken cards and cards that need reuse, which are going off to a train to be taken away. And then the science packs are heading out here, down this down this belt, down this belt, all the way down here, down here, down, 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 forever. And they're going on, onto the belt here, and they will eventually be passed down into the into the system. Now if we look down here, we've got, um, we've got plenty of tier 2 and plenty of tier 3. But there seems to be a shortage of tier 1. But we are, we are sort of making those, and we're sort of gradually catching up again, so... We're not, not, I'm not doing any research at the moment because I've done all the stuff I particularly wanted to. And yeah, the tier tier ones are there's there's there's, there's enough available to, that I could do some research. Um, but we're still sort of trying to fill the system back up again after doing a rather large research a little while ago. So yes, what I've done over there, building the Naquim Tesseracts, has allowed me to start making the Deep Space Science three packs and starting doing sciences. And that's meant I've been able to sci uh, science up. I've been able to research these Naquim processors, which is the next step on the way to building things like a nexus which you need for science 4, um, supercomputer 4s, lots and lots of other exciting things like thruster suit 4s and so on. There's not, I have to admit, there's not an enormous amount in here that is enormously exciting, um, except that I need I need to go down here in order to get the deep space science 4s and, and finally win the game. I could potentially start researching here, I guess, which is... Um, but it's going to be... Again, I, d I don't think I have 4,000 research packs available. That said, I was doing the maths earlier. It turns out, each time this runs, and it uses one of the um, comprehensive catalogues and one Tesseract, and various other things as well, each time it runs, it actually produces six Deep Space Science Pack 3s. So each catalogue is worth six, pack, six science packs, and because I've got quite a lot of uh, productivity modules in here, each science pack is worth 2.3 researches. So for every, every, um, every catalogue that's made, makes six times two and a third which is 14 science so for that 4,000 I can divide that by 14 um, which is too difficult to do in my head it's going to be about <clears throat> it's going to be about 250 300 packs so to do 4,000 research only requires about hmm, a small a fair, no sorry a small pack fraction of the catalogs um, it still requires quite a lot of the actual science packs but only only about 250 300 catalogs so it's a lot more reasonable than it seems at first glance so we've got these two machines here that are spitting one one catalogue out every um, 80 seconds when they're actually running, um, divided by the speed, presumably divided by the speed of the machine, which is four. So every 20 seconds, we're kicking. So every 10 seconds, because there's two of them, we're kicking out a science pack, probably. Does that? 
does that does that time take into account the speed of the machine? I'm not sure. So every 10, 10 to 40 seconds, depending on whether that counts or not, we're kicking out a science pack. So we are actually we're able to do at catalog. So we're actually able to do science reasonably quickly just from these two machines here. Um, although it'd be nicer if um, more of these would actually run. Um, we we shall we shall see how this goes once we get to the uh, the point where well this 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 machine has stopped. Fairly soon this machine will stop as well. Um, and then things will become a bit more under control. In fact, let's take these out of here and put them in here. There we go. And it'll stop it pulling them out off there because because this because of the rate that the science packs are coming through at, which is very very slow. Data cards are coming through at, which is rather slow. Only this machine is actually doing any of the research. So putting the extra cards in here is far more valuable than putting them in here where they'll just get ignored. Um, actually, to be honest, a better idea would be to put these in here, and then they'll get unloaded. And they'll go onto the belt here, like that, and they'll probably jam it up again. So let's actually pick, up, pick some of those up again. Right. So that'll now mean that this machine will stop as well. So this is going to make the um, the general the the, the 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 load on the Arcosphere system a lot lighter and more and easy, easier to manage. So I hope. And then I'll come over and dump a load more Arcosphere in it when the when the ship gets back. So yes, that's been the sort of the, the headline of this of the last stream was that I got Deep Space Science three up and running, which has been a, a big, major, important thing. I then went off for a, a brief a brief jolly to um to what's it called Henkis Esui, which is way out on the other side of the um, solar system. So out here, you remember in the last episode, I set up this uh, I doubled the amount of blue circuit production I had going on, and this has died for why is this stopped? What have we run out of? Have we run out of holmium? How could we run out of holmium? We've got all this processing. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, the stone has backed up. Oh, goodness sake. Um, because that's... What? How is that pointing... The... I... What? <laughs> How is that even pointing the wrong way? I... Oh, I don't understand. Anyway, that will have now fixed that because somehow this underground belt here got turned round. Now, what's probably happened is when I put the, um, the extra belt in up here to carry this plastic, somehow that managed to get flipped round and I didn't notice. And I... But I still don't really know how that could happen quite how to got that wrong. But anyway, that now means that we're now feeding the stone through a bit more effectively. And then up here, why is this all stopped? Because stone bricks have... Right, so we're not pulling stone bricks through particularly quickly. Um, oh, this... There's a lot of problems today as I'm going around and fixing. So, why why are you stopping this? So, if this is equal to 2400, what's that connected up to? That's connected up to the... Ah, that's connected up to this chest down here. Um... Right, so this is the thing that's monitoring how much stone we have available. So when this fills, when this chest fills back up again, oh, that'll start running. This is so ridiculous. All these sort of things, that, such fragility that you get the the one little thing gets put in the wrong way round and everything else breaks. It's a bit of a bit of a nonsense, but oh well. And um, this will eventually fill this chest back up again, and that will mean that we can start that we'll start using this stone. So the point, the point, um, the point is. That I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of stone available in order to um, turn it into into stone bricks, wherever that happens. Um, yeah, here, in order to turn it into stone bricks to be made into the circuit. So I didn't want to run out risk running out of stone, um, and I also didn't um, I also didn't want to be using the stone from the stone train over here when there was stone available over here. However, on the flip side, there needs to be an overflow here, which turns it into sand and then into glass, which leaves the planet. And I don't want to be overflowing. I don't want to be using the overflow if there's not enough stone around. So I've got this to detect whether there's plenty of stone available. And if so, it turns this system on to to to, to turn the stone into glass and get rid of it. Um, and also, I've got a signal down here that tells the um, the station over here that if there's a shortage of if there's a shortage of stone, like if this gets below a hundred, then to start allowing the stone through from here as well. So in theory. This should mean that the, the right stone gets used all of the time. In practice, oh, who knows? It's a horrible mess, but... <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully it'll, it'll all work reasonably sensibly. But we just need to let this fill up again, and then things will start flowing a bit, a bit more normally. Okay, so, as I was saying... <laughs> We have up here, we have a system where we are making Holmium, we are, make, we are making Holmium into the blue circuits. I doubled this last time so it run twice as fast, simply by just copying and pasting. It's now far more effective, it produces twice as many circuits, and this rocket will fill up a bit more quickly, at least as long as the system doesn't break as it did just then. Great. The problem was, this was ripping through enormous quantities of copper. 
So the first thing I was I discovered was that um, this copper mine here is running kind of low. There's not there's not a huge amount of copper left in this in this here. So this mine isn't capable of providing enough to keep the uh, to keep the whole system running. I also discovered that this mine hadn't been wired in correctly, so I fixed that. This is now linked, wired up, and this mine is now working. Copper is being picked up from here. But I thought, let's do a bit of future proofing. So I've built in another two copper mines up here. So we've got loads of copper available now. Um, this is all going to be, and, and so the trains will come out to these two mines as well, pick up the copper and bring it down. And and, and so I've, and these are massive patches. We've got seven million there. We've got eighteen million there. There's loads available here, and I've, to the extent that I've used blue belts entirely for these because the copper can come out much, much more quickly. Now, I'm not using copper remotely fast enough for that to be necessary, but I thought might as well build it on quite a large scale. <clears throat> I'm also aware that this oil mine down here, also struggling to keep up. Now, okay, the tanks are full now, but it was struggling to keep up. But now I've built another oil mine up here. So these tanks are all full as well. So we're now producing oil much, much faster, much, much more effectively because we've got, because you've got almost a thousand percent here on the oil mine. We've got, whereas we've got 200 percent down there. So it's, it's five times as fast almost. Uh, about four times as fast, actually. So over here, now this is all kicking in again. We're going to start using the oil a bit faster. So this is now, is now working. Um, this seems to, seems to be good. I think I can now trust this to just keep running. It has occurred to me that I'm going to be getting through quite a lot of coal with all this plastic I'm making. However, so far, as far as I'm aware, we don't seem to have had too much of a problem with the coal. So, um, let's have a little quick look. Where's, there's the coal mine. Still two, still three million left there. But I think at some point I'm probably going to need to come out here and build up some more coal mines for, for this. Because it is going to get, it gets through a fair amount of it. I'm... Not sure where I'm going to get that coal from because I don't see any other big. Oh, some some coal patches over here. That's that's just shadow. They're quite hard to spot on this purple uh, purple uh, landscape. Four million there, three and a half million, one and a half there. There are patch. There are patches of coal around. I'll probably be able to find some. Oh, one point four, one point two. Yeah, it, it, it we're probably going to be all right with that. But this the one down here that I've got is the big, almost the biggest one I've found found yet. So that'd be a good one to go for. Um. Yeah, so sorry, I've ram rambled a bit, a little bit there. So I've, I've started, because I discovered there were some problems with the th uh, throughput of um, copper, as we're seeing here with this station basically being almost empty, um, I put in some extra copper mines, brings in more trains. This now should be okay. And now that this system is now running as it should again, I hope. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so now the overflow is running here quite happily because we've got more, more stone than we know what to do with. So we're turning all of that into glass and that's going to go into a rocket to be taken off somewhere. So good, that's all working now. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, humouring me while I went through looking to see what I'd done wrong there. So after that, the next thing I did was I went off to Trellos because there were some, some issues over here. So I looked down here, there was a ship just sat here, not going anywhere. And it turns out it was just sat there because there wasn't enough fuel in these tanks for it to take off or for it to, to fill it up, um, I think actually it was. So... Um, what, I, what I'd had been doing before was I'd been telling the ship to stay here on Trellos until it was full of fuel and full of core fragments, then it could leave. That's a great idea, except that um, it, it, except it didn't work, basically. Um, the, the, uh, the, the, we, we weren't producing the fuel fast enough for the rate we were producing the core fragments at, so the, these warehouses all filled up, so we stopped producing the core fragments, which meant we stopped getting oil produced, because they're oily core fragments that produce oil when you, cr when you crush them. And so then we weren't getting any of the, um, we weren't getting any rocket fuel through, so it wasn't enough there. So I went in uh, to the to the Trellos ship, <clears throat> and I've made this a bit more complicated, but never mind. So what I've done, uh, why is this complaining about a spaceship? Oh, there's another spaceship already landed. Okay, shush. Um, uh, shush. There we go. Right. So I'll I'll mute this for you guys as well. So there was, um, yeah. So before. It was watching for there being a full tank of fuel and or, and all of the other things. So what I've done as well now is I've fed in the amount of fuel that's in the external tanks onto through the clamp onto this onto another wire here as signal F. So at the moment signal F is zero because there's nothing being fed in through here. That's fine. But we've now got another another comparator up here that's watching for Fs and and um, saying so if there's less than eighty thousand fuel on the planet, or there's more than five hundred and fifty thousand fuel on the spaceship, then take off. Um, so this will mean that if there's fuel on the planet, it'll all get pulled into the spaceship. 
or nearly all of it will get pulled into the spaceship. But if there's a shortage of fuel, but if we run out of fuel on the planet, it'll take off anyway. I've also tweaked the other numbers. So this, this, the other one is 550 as well, which is enough fuel to take off. Uh, so when it fuels up here, it goes up to 550, and that's enough fuel to take off from both um, Norvis and Trellos without having to refuel. So it'll never get stuck on Trellos, but it will always turn up there with. A decent amount of space, certainly two, at least 200,000, because that's what it takes to lift off from Norvis, um, to be filled up from the tanks there. So, so my hope is that that means we'll have, we'll always have, we'll always have enough room to empty these tanks. But if the tanks empty, it won't matter. The ship will still be able to leave anyway. So yeah, I think that's, I think that's going to be going to be good. Going to sort it out. Um, I haven't left it running for very long yet, but I believe it should work. Because this, this planet is such a big one, it produces the uh, core chunks at a hell of a rate um, to the point where these are filling up faster faster than they're being emptied. So, in order to help combat that, I built a second Trellos chunk ship. Um, the only problem is, I didn't when I built it in, in orbit, there weren't any, any wagons available. Now, I could send it down to Norvis to land there. It would get these finished off. The trains would do goodness knows what. Um, it would probably actually it would probably land and then immediately leave because be, it, I think it had trains but no cargo. So I'm not doing that. What I have what I've done instead is um, on Norvis orbit. I've added to my shopping list. I put some cargo wagons on there. So the, so the next spaceship that comes up will also have. Uh, 20 cargo wagon or more than 20 cargo wagons on it because of the way this thing tends to work so now down on Norvis the ship here has loaded up it's got more than 20 car it's got plenty of cargo wagons on it that's fine there's plenty of storage space available up there um, and so once this eventually fills up it'll fly up I can then land the uh, other spaceship in Norvis orbit again get those trains built and then fly off to Trellos in order to start just in order to for it to start bringing bringing the core of core fragments over from there as well so, yes, I'm confident that that will work well um, once I've got the wagons available. <clears throat> so the limiting factor um, on uh, to, to, to a lot of the a lot of the science that I'm trying to do it is or very soon will be Naquium, as you, which will come as no surprise to anyone who's played this game. Um, if we look up wherever it is that I'm making Naquium plates, here it is. Okay, we actually do have we have a decent supply of Naquim at the moment. That's quite impressive. Normally, we are very very short of it. Let's see what's available in the um, in the drop off place. Oh, it's because the spaceship's just arrived and, and emptied the load out. So down here, we've uh, currently we've got actually got quite a lot of Naquim. This is this is unusual. Um, things things are going surprisingly well, but it has has generally been a thing that there is a massive shortage of. So I went over to Tulip as well, which is where the Naquim processing has been happening, and this is where the bottleneck is. So on Tulip, we are we've got all of this facility down here, processing um, Vitamelange into all of the different things we get. So we get we get the um, Vitalic epoxy, we get this Vitalic reagent, we get the Vitalic acid. Um, <clears throat> we also get down here we get um, I can't even remember what this stuff is. Vitamelange extract, Vitamelange core chunks, Vitamelange uh, spice, and uh, more Vitamelange extract. So yes, we've got all of those being produced, um, but basically all of the <clears throat> all of the stuff that's being produced most of the time is just being dumped straight into the vitalic acid system up here. That's being dumped into making into producing the naquium as fast as possible, as fast as we possibly can. So I've been I came in and I did a bit of playing around with modules. So now we've now got all of these um, machines are running on the best modules I've got available. So I've upgraded to mod tier six everywhere I possibly can. Um, <clears throat> on all of these. I've cut out a few of the machines as well to make it a, bit, a little bit more efficient on the modules. And I've also put in some upgraded modules on the Vitamelange production a little bit as well. Just because I'm desperately, desperately trying to get as much Vitamelange produced, uh, no, as much, much Vitalic Acid produced as I possibly can. It's still not enough. If we have a look at the production graphs, and this is, this is reasonably interesting, uh, if we can spell and we look at the production graphs, we can see, okay, Naqu Naquim ingots, these ones, over the last 10 hours. So you can see this is where I came in and started messing around with it. So there's a bit of a wibbly spike because I broke things a little bit. No, uh, no, actually there's a different reason there's a wibbly spike. I'll talk about that in a second. But as you can see from the sort of the, the general line of where it's where it is when it's all working to the general line of where it is when it's all working now has gone from about 120-ish to 140, 150-ish. So I've gained 
about an extra, actually about a quarter. That's not bad. That's a reason, a reasonable increase for all, all. But given that all I did was come around and, and mess around with the uh, the modules that are here and try and tidy up the the inputs and make them a little bit more streamlined. It turned out one of the problems was, and it's still being a little bit of a problem actually looking at this, was that this um, system here wasn't produced. The the um, we're running out of um, vitamin melange in the stations, and it looks like we're still having a bit of a problem there because a lot more is being taken from the bottom side of the belt and the top. So I need to go in here and put some belt balances in, which is a little bit annoying. But we're now bringing in more of this. And part of the reason we're having a problem is it's very similarly to on Henke Sesui. This original vitamin melange mine I'd built wasn't able to keep up with the amount of demand um, because I was pulling. I've required a lot of vitamin melange, and it just wasn't wasn't working. So I've put in a second vitamin melange mine down here, and that's now somehow. Despite the fact that we've gone from um, one mine that couldn't keep up to two mines, uh, we've now got two mines that are both completely full. I'm not quite sure exactly how that works, but I'm not going to complain because we now do seem to have enough vitamin melange coming in and the system is now basically working. We're churning it through as fast as we possibly can. And this place is relatively unusual because most of my um, outposts like this where I've got core mining, the core mining is producing, yes it's producing the core fragments which I wanted it for, it's also producing enough of whatever the exotic resource from that planet is to keep that planet entirely satisfied. So if we look at, I mean the, the most extreme example is Kothar where this whole system is just asleep because we've got a full station here and whenever we need some ir iridite a train will come round here, grab it from here because I've set the priority here for this one to be a higher priority than any of the others and it'll then shoot off down to the um, station and unload but and yet still it's um this so this one is completely completely full the system is basically idle this this spaceship has sat here for forever it just doesn't, doesn't do anything somewhere in the middle is miokin as uh, another good example this one um actually this one's gone to sleep as well i was going to say we use a lot more vulcanite so we're pulling a decent amount of this through um at the moment it it's asleep as well Henkes Eswe is probably similar. Do I have core mining on Henkes Eswe? I probably do. I've been trying to put it in just about everywhere. Um, yes, here it is. This one, again, asleep. So, <laughs> another another poor example. But on Tulip, it's running absolutely flat out, and it's still only producing a, a slight trickle of the um, of, of the, uh, the stuff that I actually want. Now, this is partly because um, this is a relatively small planet, so these six mining drills aren't producing all that much. Um... Of the, that all that much in the way of the core fragments on um, Trellos, two of these is enough to fill a belt completely. Um, out here, six of them doesn't doesn't quite fill it. So yeah, there's a bit of a difference there going on. But also it's because I'm just using so much of it. There's there's two blue belts of <coughs> two blue belts of vitamin melange going straight into the processing facilities here. Actually, it's not going in quite flat out, um, but it's going in at quite a rate, and we're getting we're getting through a lot of it. Put it that way. So yeah, I built that up, and um, and it's now it's running acceptably. But I think the thing I'm going to have to do for, uh, in order to improve this again further is essentially come along to here and build up another copy of this processing facility. But I'll come in and I'll use um, instead of using the little little basic beacons, I shall use the bigger uh, wide area beacons. These things. And design it based around tier 6 modules, because I do have at least some of those, it's particularly the speed and efficiency ones, in order to get this to run a, with fewer machines, so I can fit it into a smaller space, with, therefore requiring fewer modules, and, th and then hopefully just all running a bit more effectively and a bit more efficiently. Um, and producing a lot more, and then I can double this up here as well, and start producing hopefully about twice as much um, uh, Naquium. And as it is, the system is is kind of working, as we saw when we looked at um, Norvis Orbit um, and over here. We're in a better position for um, Naquium than we've been at any other time when I've looked at it. Um, we're now waiting. Oh, here we go. One of these long-range ships has just arrived, so that can now dump all of the Naquium across, which will load up this one. It can go off and start processing it. So. I think it's possible that I've now moved the bottleneck to these ships rather than the processing. We'll see how that goes. I might need to build another one of these. If so, that's that's fine. It's, it's something I can definitely do. But we'll see how that goes. So, thank you for watching. That's, uh, as I say, plenty of things for me to do in the next episode. Uh, building up those, um, building up the, building up the Naquium processing on Tulip to run a bit faster. So that's uh, that's I think that's going to be my next big job. And then I can start thinking about Deep Space Science 4, which actually looks a lot less scary than I was expecting. Um, there are some, yes, to be some challenges and some new stuff in there, but it's a lot less terrifying than I was expecting. So, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Um, I know lots of people watch these videos, and I'm, I also know that not all of you are subscribed, so please make sure you are. Um, 
and then you'll uh, know to come back on uh, next Wednesday to watch the uh, watch the next stream, and of course next Sunday to see the next one of these videos. Minecraft happens on mon streams on Mondays and videos on Saturdays. Those are all good, good, good fun as well. And maybe there'll be some other videos around here and there if I have time. I have been very busy recently. I'm sorry. I just will we'll produce stuff whenever I can. But at the moment, it's it's proving a little bit difficult. But I'm I'm managing to keep the t the two big series going. So I hope I hope you're enjoying them, and I hope we'll see you next time. So until then, thank you very much for watching.